Hello everyone, welcome to Vsort. My name is Amit, and today we are going to know about the caches. Uh, we can increase the performance of, of our Spring Boot application using that caches. But the thing is, there are multiple caches are available inside the market. So here question is, which type of cache is suitable for our application? So let's understand that what type of cache is suitable for our application and what is the exact need and how it works. Okay, so let's start. So before jump onto the code, let's understand what is the need of cache and what type of cache uh, we can use in what scenarios because there are multiple types of cache in the market. Now let's understand and uh, let's take one example. Uh, so let's see we have browser and in browser we are trying to access one website called as a find weather. When we are trying to find the weathers, then it will call to the server and server has Spring Boot application. Once Spring Boot application received that request, uh, then it calls to the database. And this database has all information of the weather. But as we know, that information will uh, keep changing after one hour. Okay, after the one hour. So uh, why it is going to change after one hour? Because to uh, provide the latest update of the weather to the user. Okay, so uh, once that Spring Boot application hit to the database, it will get the information of the weather and provide to the end user. Now, what is the problem here? Let me tell you. Let's say there are 1 million requests are coming for that weather application. From the world, 1 million or 10 millions or 100 millions users are trying to access this Spring Boot application or that weather information. So once uh, 1 million users call to that Spring Boot application, then that Spring Boot application will call to the database and it will do 1 million DB calls, which is very, very, very costly and it is impacting on the performance. So that is the problem here. And if you are hitting 1 million requests to the DB, definitely it will get crash. Okay. Or at least the performance will get worst. Okay. Performance will get down definitely. So how to uh, avoid this problem? So for this, we can use a cache. Okay. We can use cache. So what happened here? Uh, when we use the cache, so when our application start, okay, and when first request comes to our application, then that cache will trigger and cache will go to the database and it will fetch all the information for one hour. Let me repeat, it fetch all the information from the database for one hour and it will return to the end users. So whatever the request, whether it is 1 million or 10 million, that request comes to the Spring Boot application and here Spring Boot application will not hit to the database. Instead of that, it will read the data from the cache. In this way, it improve the performance of the application. Okay, now uh, let's understand what are the types of cache. There are two types of cache. One is in-memory cache, another is distributed cache. So what is in-memory cache? As we see here, uh, if we are creating the cache inside the Spring Boot application, okay, so this is called as a uh, in memory caching. So here the thing is this is very fast. Okay, because it's in memory cache and It is that cache is with the in, inside that Spring Boot application. So it's very fast So here the problem is if that Spring Boot application get down. Okay, then that cache will get vanished Okay, that cache will get cleared totally. So this is a disadvantage, but the advantage is the performance is very high then uh, what are the types of or different different caches uh, in case of in-memory caching? So first is concurrent map cache. It's very simple, uh, but it is not providing any facility. It uh, will work like a hash map. Okay. Now the next thing is uh, caffeine cache. So it's a library which provide a uh, lot of features like deleting the cache or if you want to expire that cache after a particular time then we can uh, provide such kind of inputs to that cache. So basically in, in uh, many projects, you will see that caffeine cache and it is widely used in the applications. Now, what about the distribute caching? So let me clear you. Uh, if there is a big enterprise application, okay? If there is a big enterprise application which have multiple services, uh, or microservices, okay? And these all the services or that's all these applications need some common data, 
okay need some common data then that application has to call the database okay database but again here the problem is um, that all the services will call to that uh, database okay even if even it uh, use the in memory cache in each service then still that data is going to duplicate for example we have 100 100 microservices and in 100 microservices we are using the in memory uh, that caching then that same data will get duplicated in every application and which make all the applications heavy so uh, what is the solution on that so let me tell you what is the solution so here we can go for distributed caching so basically uh, these are the uh, some vendors uh, which provide that distributed caching called as a hazelcast redis eh cache and that memory cache so uh, here that another advantage of that uh, distributed cache is even that application gets down still that cache is there again there is uh, uh, another advantage of that distributed cache is called as a clustering for example uh, if there is a very large enterprise application and thousands and millions and millions requests are coming to the application so that single cache will not work so for that it use the cluster so basically cluster means a group of uh, duplicate copies of that cache so for example here this is the cache in the cluster and if that cache gets updated the same data will get updated into the another copies of that cache okay so these all copies will get sync okay it will be in the sync now the next thing is even if uh, any application gets down still data is there because it deployed as a separate application even in the cluster if any cache is uh, going to down or uh, getting down in that case also that another copies are um, running okay so there is no data uh, lost in that case so that is the advantage of distributed cache but yes uh, that cache is used in a very big enterprise applications okay and uh, but you can see that caffeine cache is widely used okay because every application is not a uh, enterprise application that's it now the next thing is today we are going to see caffeine cache okay and in the next sessions we will uh, take any uh, any distributed cache for the implementation now let's jump onto the code so here let's create the application so for that what we can do here provide the name let's say uh, caffeine okay caffeine cache like this and at the dependency we need only here one dependency called as a web spring web that's it and click on the generate and let's import that application inside our sts okay okay uh, here if you see uh, i have already created that caffeine cache uh, uh, spring application and here uh, i have created one package called as a controller called as a weather controller and uh, i have written here one api called as address get mapping and that api is slash get weather and the city name now uh, the thing is key we haven't here uh, implemented that entire weather application the reason behind is to key our our goal is not to uh, implement that application our goal is to understand the functionality of the caching and configuring the caching so that's why i have taken here simple api okay simple api now the next thing is uh, that application is up and running now let's hit that application that api and let's see okay let's see so here let's hit that application okay so for this what we can do uh, open the browser and let's hit that application okay so you can see we are getting uh, the this this output and here if you see it is calling okay here printed this uh, that uh, that uh, string is printed called as calling get weather service okay so let me hit it again and again so i have hit it five or six times now you can see it is calling this weather service again and again that means it is printing this this uh, string and it means it is calling this method again and again now uh, i want to apply because here if you see for next let's say for next one hour uh, this out will output will be same okay this output will be same from this method so here what we can do we can apply the cache so what we can do we have to create a uh, cache here okay so for that right click new create a new package called as config package 
package okay apart from this uh, we need another thing the dependencies so these are the dependencies copy these dependencies and go to the pom.xml and paste here so don't worry about the code okay don't worry about the code uh, i will provide the github link here so already i have copied and pasted here that uh, cache dependency okay so we need to this uh, we need these two things this one and this one that's it now here we are good now let's see uh, how to config that configuration class so go to the package right click new class and let's say config class name is config okay config that's it and here provide at the rate configuration okay now we are going to provide here one another annotation called as at the rate enable caching okay enable caching that's it now the next thing is we have to create a bean okay we have to create a bean of that caffeine cache create a bean okay so if you see here let me import this bean okay that's it and here we are good okay let me explain this code okay so basically we create simple uh, caffeine bean here okay and the method name is caffeine config and here we are returning that caffeine bean so before returning we need to configure that bean so there is a new builder okay new builder method which is responsible for to create an object once that object is created we are calling uh, or we are setting some configurations for example expire after write okay expire after write that means uh, we can provide here that uh, expiration time of that cache so let's say i want to uh, i want to expire that cache within one minute then i can give here one minute now i want to expire this cache within a five seconds okay five seconds or let's say three seconds then i can provide here that value and here you have to change the time unit so if i want seconds okay then you can uh, use your seconds now the next thing is we have to configure here manager okay so i'm copying the things to save the time okay otherwise that video size will get extended and okay so anyway so see here okay so after this we have to configure that cache manager bean in which we have to write a method called as a cache manager return type is a cache manager and we have to pass that caffeine caffeine here all right now the next thing is uh we have to simply create a cache manager is equal to caffeine cache manager okay once we created that cache caffeine cache manager uh, object inside that object we have to set that caffeine okay we have to set that caffeine uh, cache which is already created here so basically what happened when spring boot start it will create first this bin once that bin is created after this when it going to st uh, start creating this bin then it will pass uh, while creating the bin it will call this method and while calling this method it pass that bin of caffeine okay here in that method uh, as an input argument once it pass then that we um, configured we can uh, we are ready with that cache manager our our caching is ready now how to cache okay so let's go to the controller and here provide annotation called as at the rate cache uh, cacheable okay cacheable that's it and you can provide here any name let's say my cache okay that's it my cache now the next thing is uh, let's see will it cache or not okay okay so let's hit that url and let's see that cache will work or not but before hitting to that cache let me tell you the flow of the execution so here first when we hit uh, first time to that method or that url that it will execute that actual logic okay and it will return that data before return uh, it will store that data inside the uh, cache okay inside the cache on second request okay if second is user second user is calling this this url on second time first it will check that data is present into the cache or not if it is present then it will pick that data from the cache and it will return it will not go inside this method so before execution of this method it will pick the data from the cache that's it so in that way it will work 
and uh, it's magic right how internal it is working so basically it uh, apply that aop aspect oriented programming concept here uh, internally okay that's it so in that way that cache will work and let's hit uh, will it work really or not okay so this is the url uh, let me hit this now uh, first time you can see it is calling this weather service so this line is getting printed first time only now let's hit it again again refresh i am refreshing this now i can see uh, it is not printing this that means we are getting the data from the cache so uh, how much time like uh, it will get be there okay so let me tell you we have added here 50 second time okay 50 second time so till 50 seconds uh, it will get the data from the cache after 50 seconds that data will get expired and again after 50 second uh, it will execute actual logic and return actual data so in that way uh, that cache mechanism is working uh, now another thing is there are multiple options inside this cache to configure for example i want to set here the size of cache okay i want to set here the size of cache so for this thing what we can do uh, let's take it on the next line okay so dot um, you can see here a lot of options okay maximum size and here you can provide a maximum size let's say i want to um, save your uh, save here only 100 items okay so you can give the size and apart from this there are multiple options like initial capacity uh, expire after write okay so you can provide the durations so a lot of options are there uh, and you can use that option or you can explore that options by yourself so this is all about the caffeine cache in next session we will see that distributed cache called as eh cache or redis cache and if you like so please share and subscribe this video and thanks for watching the video